me and a guy in the front row stood up at the exact same time and shouted two words. Lee, Lee Strobel! <laughs> Motherfucking Strobel. <laughs> That's right. Lee Strobel, infamous Christian apologist and author of The Case for Christ, is on the stand. <laughs> Lee Strobel is a historian the way I am a personal tra- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the GamCast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because we don't want to show up at the therapist with no trauma. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. I think we should have seen the IMAX version. <laughs> I think that was a problem. Just <laughs> get more David A.R. White in our eyes at once. Exactly. And sitting 989 miles to my right is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> Well, we've already given you a hint, but Heath, tell us, what will we be breaking down today? We watched God's Not Dead 2. (laughs) It's the story of a high school history teacher who refuses to pledge her undying allegiance to atheism, even if that means she gets fired and also possibly executed by the state. (laughs) So... Really, uh, it's the story of every Christian teacher in the entire public school system because that's the kind of persecution they're dealing with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's real. My mom was a teacher. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she taught me stories. They used to beat the shit out of the Christian teachers. They'd haze them. <laughs> Her and the Jew with the, the versus the other. Can yeah. Jesus bring you candy? God, is it Thursday already? <laughs> yeah. And Eli, was it everything that you hoped it would be? Look. Uh, there will be a day when I hold my firstborn son in my arms, and on that day, I will lean down to him, and I will whisper, you're meh, because of how fantastically terrible this movie It's Honestly, it's like whoever made the first movie listened to our episode and was like, oh yeah, motherfuckers, what well, about this? <laughs> The first movie at least made a little sense. Like, you could imagine a professor. I mean, you can't really, but but you could imagine <laughs> a professor of. doing that. This movie, we're just going to crazy town. Holy shit. And we're going to stay there for two hours, folks. Now, I, I should say, of the three of us, I'm the only one, I believe, that never saw the original. So believe it or not, this movie could have made even less sense. Yeah, you uh, must have been lost. <laughs> right. So now before we jump into this one, are, are there any important plot points or characters that we should catch everybody up on in, in preface? Uh, okay, so that Chinese kid was convinced by a classroom debate in the first movie to believe in Jesus. So that's why he's wandering around the movie asking all the white people he can find who Jesus is <laughs> and about all the crazy, insane shit. No doubt he's now reading in the Bible in his second language. Yeah. <laughs> the black guy who has absolutely nothing to do with this movie uh, no. also had absolutely nothing to do with the last movie. Nope. But he's here just to remind us that the only good black character we will get in this movie is so stereotypical and offensive that I had to wear blackface in the theater to balance him out. Just personally, <laughs> for myself, I had to go full Samba. I see. <laughs> well, now it, now it makes so much more sense. Um, I, I don't have any catch-up points on the, the characters from the first one, but uh, personally, I want to know the backstory of this one dude in our theater. The whole movie, I was distracted by this. There's one old guy who went to see this at like, what was it, like 10 o'clock on yeah, a Thursday uh-huh. night. He said it was it, very distracting. Anyway. Everyone in my th- – this is why I love New York City. Everyone in my theater saw it ironically. But none of us knew that at first. So the movie started and we were all like, oh, yeah, we're watching the movie. And then the first person laughed and then all the rest of us laughed at it. And then the second person laughed, and then all the rest of us laughed. And by the end of it, we were all just like, fuck you! (laughs) No better city to live in that you can go to an entirely ironic viewing of God's Not Dead. (laughs) No shit. Did not happen. uh, Every time I made noise, the guy did a half turn, a full turn, and then a a, a double 720 turn. Yeah, it was crazy. I I was glad at the end that we were uphill from him. That that made me feel a little (laughs) safer. Well, the Germans were uphill at D-Day. I'll get you. Come on, (laughs) 
Well, I'll tell you what, if the listeners are anything like me, they've already waited two years and a weekend to hear Eli break down this movie. So we'll pause for a quick break. And when we come back, we'll tackle the army of brainless straw men that is God's Not Dead 2. On my way out of the theater, as the sound of the newsboys faded behind me, the foremost thought in my head was, damn, do I hope Eli and Anna do a song. And they did. So huge thanks to friend of the show, Morgan Clark, for taking care of the guitar, the drums, the mixing, and the backing vocals, whose fine work you can find at soundcloud.com slash Morgan Clark. That's Clark with an E, which will be linked on the show notes for this episode. And fiance of the show, Anna Phyllis Smith, whose website will also be linked on the show notes, who wrote the arrangement, God Awful Movies, is proud to present the song that you're going to be singing to yourself now for the rest of the day. Sorry about that. Or, I mean, you're welcome. I mean, you're welcome. Or talk about the Bible in a classroom somehow The bad guys are the ACLU The Lisa Joan Hart is supposed to be hot And so is David O. White Now I'm lost Blood lines What's the deal with this Chinese guy? Oh, God's not dead He was never alive He was totally created by morons and liars God's not dead He was never alive In fact, the declaration conveys misunderstanding Morons 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 and liars The girl from school is just a witness now But all she proves is the point of the other side Why would you turn in your sermons? Oh my God, it's not dead, he was never alive, what does it matter if Jesus Christ existed, God's not dead, he was never alive if this movie had a point I completely fucking missed it, morons 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 and liars morons let mocking pour and ratings fall addressing God like a like a guy who was sitting on a throne that we killed with a spear like it was the end of Golden Compass. It was about the idea of God being no longer useful through Nietzsche's view of the world. So while the idea of God being dead is actually incredibly inappropriate, the idea of Christians not understanding the quote about God being dead is actually incredibly apropos because it's about proving a negative. And that's one of the big problems that comes up when you're talking about these kind of things is because it's like I claim that, you know, unicorn 
unicorns exist. And you say to me, well, I think unicorns do exist or don't exist. And then I say to you, well, okay, you have to prove to me that unicorns don't exist. That's asking me to prove a negative in the same way it's asking someone to prove that God is dead. It's impossible but because you're the one making the claim in the first place. I guess it's really a question of ontology. God's not dead. He was never alive. He was totally created by morons and liars. God's not dead. He was never alive. He was totally created by morons and liars. Morons. Morons. Morons and liars. Morons. Morons. Morons and liars. And we're back for the breakdown, and I've got to say that Pure Flix logo is starting to look pretty damn fancy, y'all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's getting fancy schmancy. And the first shot we get of is of Melissa Joan Hart, and I just want to say, I have so many notes on her physical appearance, <laughs> but the first one is that Melissa Joan Hart looks bad pregnant. You know that little moment just like... When a woman is pregnant and she just can't because there's a baby inside her and they just they just look like sweat running down a mountainside. That's what Melissa Joan Hart looks like all the time now. That's just her. She wakes up and she goes to sleep just looking like the worst moment in the carrying of a new life. <laughs> my very first note was, oh, my God, she looks like somebody spackled Amy Schumer's shot. <laughs> Actually, my first logo, my first note was on the logo. And then three, two, one. Jesus music and then that, yeah. I thought she kind of looked like uh, she got acupuncture with Botox needles, like <laughs> her entire body. And she she moves like she moves like a character from South Park. Like she can't. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Camera faces are like the moon faces Earth. The whole movie. <laughs> So then we cut to an America Christians montage. We've got sports players praying, American, an American flag, flag. Yeah, yes. firefighters. Right. And uh, my music note was Eli singing Christian rock, sarcastically. <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> and I wrote right here, and as they're giving us this little introductory montage, I was like, oh, look, it's too damn many characters. <laughs> yes, because right. we get intro we just get a reminder of everyone. We've got Chinese guy from movie one, mm -hmm. David R. White. Oh, he's so clumsy. He's so clumsy. <laughs> so here's a quick question. I look, this is maybe a little bit further on in the movie, but nothing but terrible shit ever has happened to David R. White. <laughs> At a certain point, as a believer in an omniscient force, wouldn't he be like, I think God hates me? <laughs> I keep getting attacked by bears. <laughs> it's about the only thing we don't see happen to him. Because the very first scene, we see him walking, and this woman spills her coffee on him, and she just fills David R. White with coffee. She might as well turn him upside down and give him an enema with coffee. That's how she's just like, oh, I'm so sorry, and just like pours for like 36 seconds. Like, Do you want to move your hand? Nope, still pouring. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, like, just to keep everybody uh, uh, up to speed here, we meet Grace. That's uh, that's uh, Melissa Joan Hart's character. We meet Pastor David. That's David A. R. White. We meet Martin, who is the minority, um, and we also meet Brooke, who is going to play a pivotal role in this movie. And of course, we meet her heartless atheist parents. Yes, Brooke looks like River Song got stung by a bunch of bees. <laughs> uh, in case you're wondering for a mental image, yeah. Uh, uh, and her dad immediately establishes himself as a Jewy Jew lawyer, is what I have in my notes. <laughs> There's quite a few of those in this movie. And when we meet Brooke, she's having a conversation with her parents. Now, we, we don't get filled in on exactly what they're talking about later, but I'll, I'll just spoil it for you. Basically, they're saying... Jesus Christ, daughter, you still moping about that dead brother stuff? It's been months. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. we as atheist parents, the moment he died, stopped remembering his name. <laughs> How many times do we have to tell you nothing happened when your brother died? <laughs> nothing <laughs> happened. Now, Be comforted by that. Now yeah. make sure you go to Stanford. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing more comforting than knowing nothing happens after death. That's why it's so easy for us. 
And also, she meets her friend outside the house, so she has this thing where her parents are like, eh, go to a good college. And then, again, this movie is going to disprove itself so many times, but for the first time, she's talking to her friend, she goes, it's not like they'll miss me. And then mom immediately pulls up in her car and she's like, hey, have a good day at school. We really care about you and we want you to get into a good school and drives away. And she's like, see, fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I want to point this out to the uh, the friend that she meets outside. Uh, that is the Duck Dynasty granddaughter. Oh, yeah, yeah. She is. She is the heiress to that fortune. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Duck so, whistles. Yeah. Also, fun fact: the only member of that family that still has all her teeth. Oh, I, I think you <laughs> you you might just be taking a guess there, but yes, <laughs> she's got a couple dozen at least, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's in the lead. No question, yeah. she's in the lead. Um, and then so yeah, we meet them, and the, the atheist parents are bad. And then we cut back to Grace, who is taking care of Gramps because she's a Christian. And Gramps looks like garbage. Usually when they do old people in movies, they make them just look like, ah, wrinkly and spry. But he's got, like, single beard hair sticking out of his eyeballs. And he just looks lesions awful. <laughs> yeah, he didn't hold up well. And she's bringing him breakfast in bed. But he's not bedridden, we find out. Right. Which makes it very weird. I said, is he bedridden or not? If this is going to turn into old man slash flatbread that used to be Sabrina the Teenage Witch porn, I am not it. <laughs> like, I'll jerk off, but I'm not it. I just want you to know. This is like a... I'm just... Well, I thought because we had a guy about Gramps' age that was sharing the theater with us, that this was their their way of like making sure the audience had somebody in their demographic to root for. <laughs> you know, that's how you make somebody like, the, you know, you, you, you're selling this movie to a bunch of 80 year olds and you're like, yes, I like her. She brings the grandpa food. See, that's what a Christian does instead of just leaving me in this movie theater while they go see <laughs> Daredevil and Deadpool, grandpa. Daredevil and Deadpool. They're both blind, aren't they? <laughs> both can't see through those masks. I should know. I wore a hood in the 60s. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> So, yeah, so Grandpa tells uh, uh, Melissa Joan Hart that he's going to die soon, so she should go find some dick, I guess. That's the that's what we're supposed to be uh, getting from this scene. And then she goes to work at the high school. Right, and MJH is a goody two-shoes during trash talk time. And look, I've been in a teacher's lounge. A teacher's lounge is for trash talk, so you can go out there and for – the least amount of money humanly possible, still be great and a teacher. And she's like, I don't know, guys. You're being awfully mean about the students. And they're like, suck a dick. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, yeah. She and, and I guess we're not supposed to realize this. Or again, maybe it's just because of the demo this movie is pointed towards. But she's the annoying bitch at work that nobody likes. Right. And and for good reason. And for good reason. Because when somebody's like, oh, God, these fucking students, what a pain. She's like, I find difficult students to be a blessing. It's like, fuck you. Just fuck Shut off. Shut up, nerd. Just fuck off. This is the place <laughs> for this. Yeah. We're not on fucking TV here. Yeah. Yeah. I wrote. This isn't my official statement, Melissa. <laughs> right. Jones. Exactly. I'm, not gonna... <laughs> I'm eating my lunch in between teaching kids how to read. Can I complain? Well, I think the language guys, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> we all have parties and no one invites us. Exactly. <laughs> this is where we also meet the uh, principal, the hot principal. Oh, she's she Kinney. held up. Yeah, played by Robin Givens, absolutely, and uh, it's good to know she's still making good choices, like marrying Mike Tyson and taking great roles like this one. <laughs> Very exciting. Um, so, and and then of course we also have to establish that uh, Melissa Joan Hart is a fun teacher, and we do that by cutting to her at the class having like a trivia contest where everybody has to run and hit the stapler uh, if they have the answer, and that just seems Which, like as a fat nerd i would like to say is fucking bullshit if i can't sit in my chair and answer your goddamn history questions i don't need to foot race my way to the answers let me sit in my chair and eat my circus peanuts and tell you this book I read. <laughs> well and also let's maybe maybe uh you know when you're outside a gym class maybe having the kids running towards the fucking uh, projectile thing at top speed isn't the best idea, but you know. Right. Oh, and, and by the way, her quiz question that you had to run and hit the stapler for, it's – um they're setting up the Declaration of Independence. Yes. That's the answer. Yes. And that's because uh, the Declaration of Independence contains the First Amendment, which this movie is going to be about. So <laughs> yes. strong setup. Strong setup. <laughs> From the history teacher, yeah. Good job. 
But Brooke is not enjoying Slap the Stapler. No, she's <laughs> not. And I just want to point out now, and again, look, people can dress however they want, but for someone who's going to spend the rest of the movie being a super judgmental, newly found Christian bitch, maybe I shouldn't be able to see whether or not you have an IUD based on how short your shorts are. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so, you know, so uh, Grace talks to Brooke on her way out. She's like, mm, are you okay? And she's like, no, yeah, I'm fine. And then, but later we find out she's not fine she's at not all. She's not fine. So now, now. Uh, Those shorts are inside her. <laughs> <laughs> so then she, I guess she meets up with um, with Grace after school to tell her, you know, that no, she's not fine and her brother's dead and she's all bummed because she's an atheist and she has no way to cope. Right. And um, it's important to note here that, this teacher never mentions Charles Darwin anywhere in this conversation. <laughs> that is going to be critical later uh, from a legal standpoint. Yes. Yeah, we'll yeah. get there. It's going to be the that. crux yeah. of the lawsuit against her. <laughs> More or less. But I just want to point out that the narrative of this movie is prophetizing to a child who is mourning its older brother. Totally fine. Oh, yeah. That's what the hero does. Yeah. So I wrote in my notes, this movie is already garbage and a bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and she says to her at one point, she goes... You never let anything yeah. get to you. How do you do that? And she's like, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right. I'm thinking like the right answer here is um, I'm not the one with the dead brother. Right. It, like you've never seen <laughs> right. me go. I'm a grown up and you're not. But no, yeah, it a, was like an upper middle class white lady who just takes care of her grandpa. Like, <laughs> I don't really have really had any challenges yet. Wait until later <laughs> in the movie. I lose my shit. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> like someone tells me I can't. I have to like apologize and I just lose it. I like cry <laughs> and scream. Oh, it's great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but now I'm fine. And I, I give the credit to Jesus. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you should do that. Uh, meanwhile, Amy's cancer is gone. Now, if you're asking yourself, who's Amy? Great question. What the fuck are you talking about? It's, yeah, I, I w I'm also asking that question. <laughs> uh, she's the reporter from movie one okay. who tried to do a jump out interview with Duck Dynasty, found out she had cancer, got dumped by her atheist boyfriend, but then the Christian rock band The Newsboys <laughs> prayed her cancer away. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So and if you're God. wondering who the newsboys are, just imagine the phrase weekend pickup artistry class. There you go. Just the newsboys. Isn't that fun? Divorced dad support group. Look at that. You pictured the newsboys again. Somehow, even if you picture different people, you still picture the newsboys. Right. Okay. So for, for a person coming into this cold, this was the most bizarre shit you could imagine for a person who's already seen this movie. It was just stupid, I guess. But yeah, Amy's cancer is gone. So she calls the newsboys to tell them about it. <laughs> right. And they're thrilled. Well, the guy's kind of pissed too. He's like, I told you not to pay for that oncologist. <laughs> we were praying <laughs> for you at our concerts every time. <laughs> I mean, I guess congrats either way, I guess. Whatever. You're wasting your money. Wasting money. I, well, I, I was just right because she's talking to the lead singer of the Newsboys or whatever, and I just wrote, this man's existence is hilarious. Mm. <laughs> so now we cut to Grace having dinner with Gramps, and this is the part of the movie where it became physically difficult not to laugh. Now, I, eventually I just <laughs> gave up. Yeah. But this scene was the first one where I really had to hold it in. Because uh, Grace is telling Gramps about Brooke, that poor atheist kid with the dead brother, to which yeah. Gramps says, well, what did you tell her? And Grace says, the truth. She, she means she means the made up one. The, uh, right. The, the, the not fake, not fake. the truth. Not the truth. Not like, oh, truth. I don't know. Yeah. It's hard to be 16. Bye. <laughs> I'm going to not meet with you alone because I'm a grown up and you're a child. Like that's that's the <laughs> truth. But she tells her the truth with a capital T. Yes. And yeah. my my favorite quote uh, that Grandpa responds uh -huh. is, uh, quote, that's the thing about atheism. <laughs> it doesn't take away the pain. It just takes away the hope. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh, I'm phenomenal. quite certain this took several takes. Like, that's the problem with Jews. Cut, cut. It's <laughs> atheism. Sorry, atheism. sorry. Atheism. That's the problem with atheist black people. Cut, just, <laughs> just atheist. Got it. Okay. We got a good one just for this movie. Remember, he's going to smile and he does the little catchphrase at the end. <laughs> <laughs> you think he's not going to? Oh, I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> It's pretty great. <laughs> now, I, I honestly, though, as I'm watching this scene and he throws out that line, I'm thinking to myself, I kind of hope that we look at David A.R. White's 
work in 40, 50 years the way that we look at, like, the portrayal of black people in in cinema in the 30s and 40s (laughs) and shit. I kind of hope that this is, like, the Mickey Rooney of atheism going forward or something. I mean, I'm doing it now. I'm looking at it that way now. Yeah, right, right. (laughs) I'm like the guy who saw Breakfast at Tiffany's opening day and was like, that's weird, right? And everyone was like, shut up, you (laughs) mama. Banana oil. Look at that Chinaman go. (laughs) Uh, also, he says, and this will be repeated several times throughout the movie and is the most terrifying idea that this movie proposes, which is the most basic human right of all is the right to know Jesus. Yep. Which is crazy because, <laughs> like, even by their own metric, it's you have to be alive <laughs> to know Jesus. Right? Yes. So wouldn't by necessity someone have gone – well, I mean, technically, it's like life and then knowing Jesus. <laughs> you can't technically know Jesus while you're dead. But that will get repeated throughout the movie as though everyone knows it. Yeah. Yeah. But meanwhile, we have to reinforce what a bunch of assholes the atheist parents are. So we cut back to Brooke. Uh, the Salvation Army is there to pick up all of her dead brother's stuff. They're not keeping any of it for any sentimental reasons or whatever. <laughs> Just get all his dead shit out of here. It's taking up space. And these extras cannot do anything. How no. do you lift up a box unconvincingly? <laughs> Left foot, right foot, bend down, take a bite. No, don't take a bite of the box. Just get, they're all in stony silence. It's like a bad sci-fi TV special where everyone's been turned into a robot. <laughs> And, and by the way, when the, uh, the Salvation Army truck first drives up, this was the moment when I first laughed audibly by accident. It, its slogan pulls perfectly into the frame. Yes. Doing the most good. All of a sudden a tooth sparkles. Ding! It was ridiculous. So that was the first time I couldn't really contain myself laughing. And then, you need like to go, you said, ah! they're, t- <laughs> they're taking away all the dead kid's stuff and this sister's just sitting there doing nothing. Well, of course, she was busy, sadly, thinking about Jesus during this whole thing. Of course, the message that we're supposed to be getting from this scene is Brooke's atheism can't help her now. Right. That's why <laughs> Christians are never sad when people die. That's right. Uh, but if they just high five and walk away from the grave. <laughs> right. Uh, but that's OK, because an old lady who somehow hit a Kickstarter goal to get a line <laughs> comes in and she's like, hey, I found your brother's Bible. He was a secret Christian. Bye bye. Yes, yeah, and with, with Bible margin notes and everything. Which she opens, by the way, I know it's a little thing, but she opens it to Colossians, and I'm like, ah, Colossians, what a font of knowledge and wisdom. <laughs> She's gonna get, and this is, look, we've watched a lot of Christian movies, but I'm sure that this is the first time a lot of people are hearing our show, so this is a big trope, is people just open the Bible and start reading it, like they're not gonna get six pages in and be like, oh my god, so many people fucked so many people, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm in ninth grade. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's no look of, oh, my God, it says that. Um, but, yeah, I just wrote in my notes, sad Bible reading scene. Check. <laughs> and then, okay, so, and then we get the turn, right? Oh. <sighs> and this is, so we cut to the classroom, and we learn that, okay, so this is how little this movie knows. We learn that Gandhi invented nonviolent protest. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That he did. <laughs> to which Brooke asks the question, is that like Jesus? Yes. And the teacher's like, yeah. And that's the thing <laughs> that she's going to get bum, sued bum, over bum. in this movie. Okay, <laughs> I, I want to make sure we make this very clear. The little girl, so the, the, the student says... Oh, Gandhi and Martin Luther King, is that like Jesus? And then she says, yes, it is. It's like when Jesus says, quote, here's what Jesus said. Right. That is what they, and I, and my, my notes at this point, like for like four pages, is just, do they really think that's what pisses us off? Oh my God, they really think that's what pisses it off. I can't believe they really right. think that this is what pisses us off. This <laughs> isn't what pisses us off. Yeah, this is exactly how we would want Christian teachers to handle that situation. Yes. Exactly. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, right, right. But in the universe of this, that would be like saying they busted Jeffrey Dahmer because he didn't put nutrition facts on the side of those gay guys or whatever. <laughs> in this stupid fucking movie, they seem to think that, that what, what, 
what pisses atheists off is that Jesus's existence or mythology, mythological existence, whatever, is acknowledged within a school. That the existence of the Bible is mentioned is enough to bring the goddamn ACLU and the FFRF just a running. Yeah. <laughs> also, just quick note, the ACLU is the bad guys of this movie, they would totally defend this character yes, if anyone yes. else, They would be like, oh no, you're totally allowed to do that. So just for the record, the bad guys in this film are the ones who would represent these people yes, in real life for free and constantly have to. Right. right. But in this movie, goddammit, as soon as she says the J word, there's some atheist kid texting under his desk. Also, <laughs> as if this co- movie couldn't make any less sense than it already does. That atheist kid who texts his parents apparently, hey mom and dad, geez, teachers talking about Jesus in class, help. <laughs> yeah. That kid never gets mentioned. No. The parents of Brooke decide to be the one, not the atheist kid who sent the text, the parents of Brooke. Yeah. Not the parents who make the complaint. They're the ones who are eventually going to press the lawsuit. They apparently never hear about this until the ACLU just picks what I can assume is a random student <laughs> to ask the question. <laughs> um, how about that one? <laughs> it was alphabetically. There was no Allens or Adams in the class, so they went straight they went with to Bueller. Bueller. Also, there's a great moment in the class where she's talking about how Jesus and Gandhi are the same person. Not true, by the way, but that's fine. And then they're the like straw man of the student argument is, well, then how come they both died, teach? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, I also love to, like, I mean, I would have loved to have been in that class, so I could have, like, raised my hand and said, yeah, but didn't Jesus, like, whip people and shit? I mean, that doesn't strike me as, you know, the running the money changers out of the temple doesn't strike me as nonviolent. And what the fuck <laughs> did that olive like, tree yeah, ever but do? Gandhi fucked, like, teenage girls and kept <laughs> insisting on giving them enemas, even when they begged him to stop. And then there would be silence, and she'd be like, so, moving on. <laughs> Books, right? Let's talk about people that weren't crazy. Martin Why don't Luther we move King on? fucked around on his wife a lot. I know, I know, I know. We're going to talk about something else. Um, meanwhile, of course, we have to cut back to David A.R. White because he produced this thing. So, God damn it, he's getting some screen time. Um, and he meets up with Martin, who has uh, some questions for him about God. 147. <laughs> and this is exact. supposed to be comedic. And mm-hmm. so, here's the thing. The the version of this for Christians is, man, once you find Jesus, your life is just filled with wonder and questions and inquisition. But the truth is, once you start believing in a false priori, everything else stops making sense. <laughs> yes, so you have exactly. more and more questions. <laughs> right. So you just imagine, question one, how come God are watching to rapes? <laughs> <laughs> right. Are all the questions like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why they never show the question scenes, because at one point, any of those questions would be something that Christians have to go, ooh, good question. Jingly motherfucking <laughs> keys. <laughs> They do have one question that they get. We'll get there. We'll get there later. But the one, it's fucking hilarious. Yeah. Martin's got 147 problems and Hitch ain't one. Yeah. <laughs> well done, sir. And then we uh, we cut to the principal chewing grace out for all of that jesus thing. Mm-hmm. And it's at first we just cut to them in the hallway, and she's saying, "I can't believe you said Jesus in a room full of children." And but it, it's but it's not just a hallway chewing out. It's a full blown. The school's attorneys there and everything chewing well, because out. apparently they have a full boardroom in this high school. <laughs> Enormous, yep. mm-hmm. yeah. No, they walk using... into this giant fucking Wolf of Wall Street style boardroom <laughs> where everyone's there: the lawyers, the principal, everybody, and they're talking about this like she showed the class scat porn. <laughs> right? She was like, "All right, now you can see there's two girls and one cup." Everyone <laughs> capturing that. Take notes. This will be on the quiz. <laughs> yeah. And, and basically, if she's not willing to walk around the neighborhood door to door and warn everyone she's a Christian, district has no other choice but to prosecute their own teacher. Yeah, it, what? <laughs> right. Yeah. What, what the fuck? So I also love um, evil, bad, secular guy number four. That's how he was listed in the um, 
in the credits. He says, and the remarks, you know, you, you talk to the children about da-da-da, and the remarks allegedly made by Jesus. There will be so much of this allegedly shit Yeah, in someone there. had allegedly on their word-a-day calendar, <laughs> and they, like, walked into the writer's room, and they were like, guys, stop writing. I've got an atheist word. <laughs> <laughs> See how many times we can fit it in. It'll be a contest. Right. Um, and, and she's like, I didn't do anything wrong. And the guy's like, well, I believe the school board will disagree, Miss Wesley, because, you know, how school boards are so notoriously anti-religion. What the fuck right. are you talking about? <laughs> what? Can we make Jesus the mascot for the football <laughs> team? <laughs> yeah, enough of that, that evolution. Can we make that stop being true? Um, so, but of course, Brooke also allegedly true. <laughs> Sorry, I'm into it. I'm into it. Yeah, yeah, hell's yeah. It's pretty catchy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You could you could write this shit. So uh, then we cut to Brooke finding out from the principal that Miss Wesley got in, uh, in trouble and and she's not allowed to talk to her. But right. the the opening, the establishing shot of this scene was perhaps the greatest moment and the second greatest moment in this entire movie. Because when we cut to the principal's office, she's on the phone, and we just have to have her on the phone doing principal shit. So what she's doing <laughs> is she's going, no coach, no prayers at all. Not on the field, not on the locker room, nowhere. And you can hear the coach going, but it's a tradition. No fucking prayers! No, right. no hope either. If a student yes, gets hurt, yes. no hoping it gets better. <laughs> no laughter. If you win, no celebrations. <laughs> Bring me the tears of the quarterback. <laughs> There's literally got to be like a, a Christian persecution bingo card in the script somewhere. We're like 10 minutes into the movie and all they're missing now is a Christian baker weeping as he draws dicks on a gay wedding cake and they have everything. And I just off. want to point in out again, arms of <laughs> the can't emphasize enough that the coach thing is not pivotal to the film or anything. This is an establishing shot. Right. <laughs> Make the second one black. <laughs> I want it black. So, but the point of this scene, though, is that the principal has to tell Brooke that she's not allowed to talk to Miss Wesley anymore. Yeah. So, and and now we get to uh, the scene where we where Grace is going to meet her lawyer in a in a coffee shop, um, and um, I, I, I had to look up his name later. I don't know if they ever say it, but this character's name is Tom. Um, I had him written as Colin Farrell's little brother who wanted to be in movies too. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> And he is surface of the sun hot. He looks like a Telemundo actor. <laughs> he does. He is he so is much more fuckable than Melissa Joan Hart. I kept Hart. waiting for him to try to rip off <laughs> Melissa Joan Hart's clothes. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so they start talking about the case, and she goes, I'm not a criminal. And he goes, not so fast. It's like, no, she's, she's definitely not. And he goes, so... <laughs> He's like, well, you know, they assign me to your case because cases like yours make people, this is actually his word, make people feel yucky. You know, that's my big issue with uh, with church state separation violations is, is how yucky <laughs> I feel afterwards. Ooh, I stepped in some constitutional violations. Ew, I'm scraping oh, that off my shoe never going to come out. Um, and, and then he, and then he's like, but you know, but nobody wanted your case, you know, so it, it, it had to fall to me. Cause, and I'm like, are you fucking sure? Are you sure there's not teams of Christian lawyers <laughs> right. that would, are dying to find a fucking case like this? You sure nobody wants this one? Oh, right. fuck off. Todd Starnes is right off camera masturbating. Right. And then to prove she's totally not a nut job, the second question she asks him is, are you a believer? Yeah. <laughs> no way to show that your main character is a moderate than to go, hey, just to check, are you in my cult? <laughs> right. <laughs> I missed the entire rest of the scene. I spent the rest of the time just reflecting on how she looked like Droopy Dog and Pastor Manning had a white ass baby or something. But <laughs> Oh, we can have his church now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so then we cut to uh, to David A. R. White, and he's all worn out from all that question answering. In fact, in his words, he feels like he got hit with a truck full of Bibles. That's also a joke where we're supposed <laughs> yeah. to laugh. Uh, and the black guy's like, well, that's your job. And he's like, hey, man, where were you four hours ago? And the black guy's basically like, yeah, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I just appear and disappear at random in this story. Um, and, of course, my, my note on this is like, yeah, I guess that's the problem with uh, teaching, you know, 
bullshit to people. You know, it, like, like w- people who teach real shit do not have this problem. They're like, whoo, it was so hard to answer all of those questions with my actual <laughs> knowledge of biology. Exactly. Real right. teachers love it when students have lots of questions. Yeah. And it's right. not exhausting because you're not making shit up. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Oh, man. Uh, why do cells have cell walls? It's because they need it to protect them from demons? <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Next question. You're just like, no, man. You can hand someone a book yeah, just and be a- like, there, there's your biology answers. Yeah, you're right. It's all in there. Um, but of course, then we have to, just to make sure that we can fill out that uh, Christian bingo card in a hurry, uh, we have to cut to uh, Grace reading the Bible to herself and asking God for some help with this moment. Yes, and her skin looks like someone put peach-colored paint on the surface of the moon. This is the closest we've been to her in the movie so far. Her neck looks so much like my balls, I might sue. Like at a certain point, it's copyright infringement. That's all I'm saying. I've, I've got a triple chin on my balls, too. Yes. <laughs> So, uh, so then we cut over to the disciplinary hearing, right? And, and we've got, like, she's, they're in that gigantic Wolf of Wall Street boardroom. There's 19 people on the bad guy side. Yeah, it's and right. it's just her and Mikey Farrell on the other yeah, side. Several entire law firms are here to represent this <laughs> atheist school district. Again, against their own teachers somehow. Right. Like fucking yeah. Johnny Cochran in the background trying on gloves. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Also, there is a crazy hot girl at this board meeting who I found entirely distracting. She's just sitting oh, there. Yes. She never says anything, but she's just nope. in camera frame. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And was, she's very distracting throughout that entire delightful. part. She was very delightful. That was the only good part of this movie. Yeah. And so we also – we learn in this scene that like – the school is going to let all of this slide if she'll just apologize. But she will not apologize for Jesus. She will confess and apologize, you know, the way we used to make people do for saying science stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, and, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, like, you know, in, in, the, in the universe of this movie, okay, like, she actually didn't do anything wrong and everything. But still, like, if I'm in this situation, fuck, I just apologize. These are the actions of a petulant eight-year-old, and she's the hero of this movie. But right. And her lawyer's like, well, yeah, you should just apologize. She's like, no, I will not apologize, and runs out of the room again. Right. As she petulant says, eight-year-old. I would rather stand with God and be judged by the world than stand mm-hmm. with the world and be judged by God. <laughs> or as my daddy used to say, if you go through life and all you meet is assholes, everyone you meet is an asshole? <laughs> yeah. I'd rather be an asshole with a God than a God with an asshole. Wait. <laughs> wait. It's better to stand with God. Uh, I'd rather sit with an atheist. Fuck. Fuck. Line? No. <laughs> Yeah, and she also says, of course, I'm not going to be afraid to say Jesus. <sighs> so now the evil, bad, secular guys on the other side are like, oh, like, oh, Jesus, how are we going to get out of this? To which one of them suggests that we'll leave it to the dun, 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 ACLU. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Mwah! And they might as well go, Mwah! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And this this is the second time one of our movies got this wrong. Eli, you already mentioned this. The ACLU would be representing the teacher here yes. if this happened. Yes. There's, there's no civil liberty called never hearing the word Jesus. That's not a thing. <laughs> so, Christians, if you accidentally stumbled on this podcast, first of all, apologies for the language. Second of all, <laughs> the one you want in your movie is the FFRF. Yes. We're the quote-unquote <laughs> bad guys. The FFRF. <laughs> ACLU's on your side. Here, I'll make a little song on ACLU helps you stay super crazy. <laughs> FFRF makes you stop being lazy. There you go. Use that poem. You got it forever and now. Then, but in this movie, the ACLU is out for blood. They have sharpened a stick at both ends, and they're coming after Sabrina. In fact, they've been dreaming of a case like this. That's what? That's they. That, that would be like dreaming about fucking your own wife. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding? Like, like, I mean, like, how do they not know that, like, real shit happens in the real fucking world that the ACLU does? And, like, uh, did they, eh, yeah, anywho, um, I, I have, I have nowhere to go with this because I need all of that for later in the movie. <laughs> so then we meet, uh, <laughs> we meet the evil ACLU lawyer played by Ray Wise. And I gotta say, 
played to the hilt oh, by Ray Wise. Yeah. They gave him everything but a patch over his goddamn eye. They were like, basically, <laughs> you know how they say that like uh, Christopher Guest gives everyone those one sentence character things and they make it up from there? I feel like Ray Wise got a character thing that just said Emperor Palpatine and he was like, got it. I'm good. <laughs> I'm ready to go. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> And of course, he has his assistant, Jewy McGlasses, who yes. will only be there to be like, yes, yes. So, and I love that. Okay, so this scene is the ACLU lawyer trying to talk Brooke's parents into suing the school for the teacher saying Jesus. And this is the most, like, okay, the movie's just going to go downhill in realism from here. So I can't say this is, like, the most bizarre shit. But at the moment, this is the most bizarre shit. Because he's saying stuff like he's going, like, oh, you want your kid to get into an Ivy League school? Well, no Ivy League school can resist a girl whose parents sued their school. <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking to myself, like, atheists, when they sue schools over this shit, generally speaking, have to, like, try to keep their name out of the fucking court right. documents because they'll be harassed to no fucking end by all the Christians in their community. Exactly, yeah. If, if you had shitty SAT scores, they're saying, yeah, you can still get into Ivy League schools, but you need good extracurriculars, like lawsuits against your teacher because yeah. universities love Ooh, those. Yeah. Right. You have a better chance of getting into Yale with a video essay and blackface. <laughs> Seriously. They're into Especially that stuff. Yale. Yeah. yeah, right, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and of course, he also says, think of all the money you'll get. No, it's doesn't. The money comes from fucking those schools trying to cover their own legal costs. They they don't, you know. Once in a while, I guess they do, but they, generally speaking, they don't sue for big fucking settlements in these cases. They sue to get the school to stop doing. I, and again, this is a made up bullshit thing that the ACLU or FFRF would never fucking sue. Over. But in cases like this where something actually bad did happen, they're generally not suing the school for a ton of fucking money. They're suing the school to make them stop doing that shit. And the only time it costs money is when the school pet Petulantly refuses to stop doing that shit. Right. Also, to point out, in the few large settlements there have been, it's because there's been horrific, irreparable harm done to the children yes. in those yes. situations. Right. It's not like someone's offended and they sue for a bunch of money. It's like, oh yeah, I tried to brand a crucifix onto your daughter's chest. Why are you being <laughs> a bitch about this? <laughs> Also, of course, we've got to get the title drop here. Yeah. Uh, so, so the, uh, well, the sort of title drop where the, uh, evil ACLU lawyer says this will give us a chance to prove once and for all that God is dead. And if Two. lightning had flashed, it would have been slightly less melodramatic. <laughs> right. <laughs> also, he says, your daughter's yes. a minor. She has no rights. What? And I was like, what? That's She's not a fucking mogwai, man. You can't go. strangle a pro. Let's go, go over and fuck her. She has <laughs> no rights. That's not precisely correct. Exactly what you want to hear out of your lawyer. The um, only thing that surprised me about this scene is that they didn't sign the contract in blood. <laughs> <laughs> it's standard. <laughs> And, of course, uh, and so we cut back to Grace meeting with her lawyer, and she's having this whole, why are they doing this to me scene? And, of course, it he says, because they think your beliefs are a disease. See what you did, David Silverman? Do you see what you did? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, but see, like, we do think that. They, they were right in that, but that's not why we sue people over church state violations shit but i mean like at least they, at least they got that no, part good right. point right like, also grace has crucifix <laughs> curtains if you watch this movie oh, check out her crucifix <laughs> curtains they're pretty fantastic <laughs> i totally missed that <laughs> so now we get the uh the protest outside the school where where brooke and all our christian friends are standing by the flagpole uh with tape over their mouths um, and I've got to say that that girl with the tape over her mouth gave me many, many illegal thoughts. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll move beyond that. Um, and uh, and we'll just focus on my note here, which was angry mob of Christians, the good guys in this movie. Yep. <laughs> yeah, right. I just wrote, please tell me Pussy Riot shows up to fight the Christian mob. That would be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> nope, they don't. And then, of course, because there's just so goddamn many characters we're trying to keep track of in this movie, we have to cut to David A.R. White, and he's got jury duty, and he's all bummed about it. And token black guy is saying, like, but you should take this seriously. This is your civic duty, you know? And yes. yeah. Also, just crazy moment that this movie, like, 
because you're adults. Like, I get you're Christians, but you're fucking adults. He goes, there's 300 people called. The chances of getting called are better than getting hit by lightning. And it's like, one in 300 what? is not the chance <laughs> of being hit by lightning. <laughs> I, I wrote, like, I bet he got that from the guy who calculated the tornado putting together the 747 thing. I mean, that was the same mathematician <laughs> right. that they used. I'll bet you 300 times you don't get struck by lightning. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Deal. I'm making so much money. I mean, start praying. Start praying. <laughs> um, so then we cut to the big jury selection But I want scene. 300 to one odds. <laughs> <laughs> that way I'll break even. <laughs> So then we cut to the big jury selection scene, which is going to take up a sizable chunk of this movie. Also, tiny moment, but the guy from the jury video that David R. White plays is the bailiff at the trial. Oh, is he? (laughs) Yes. Really? So I was like, oh, look at that. That's the guy from the jury video. Awesome. (laughs) (laughs) And I love, too, in this jury selection scene, basically... Uh, Tom, the lawyer, starts the scene off apologizing for how long it's going to be. He's like, yeah, this is going to take a really long time, but it's really important and stuff. So then we get them uh, voir the, uh the, the potential jurists. Um, and it's fucking hilarious because it's like, you know, the, the, the jurist will have to say something that would scare the Christian. And then the other one will have to say something that will scare the atheist. So they're saying, right, like, right. what's your favorite TV show? Pretty Little Liars. The the Christians are like, fuck that chick. The other right. guy's like, Duck Dynasty. The other are like, fuck that guy. So yeah. That's what they came up with, by the way. <laughs> and, and the ACLU guys refusing people with, like, purple hearts and Nobel Prize. Oh, yeah, at yeah. The same time. <laughs> He's just, we don't want – that guy looks like a Marine. We don't want no Marines <laughs> on the jury. We're atheists. We hate the troops. Yeah, exactly. There are no atheists in foxholes. Except for Matt Dillahunty and Kurt Vonnegut and Ernest Hemingway and the, and the guy who caught Heinrich Himmler. Oh, and that senator who has the Medal of Honor. Okay, so there's a couple, but it doesn't matter. We don't like, we don't like the troops. That's, the point is we don't like the troops. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, a uh, quick tip. If you want to make Christianity look good, don't play up the psychics and Duck Dynasty fans. Just <laughs> right around that. Right around that as best you can. Just a tip. Yeah, and now of course we have to have the whole bit where he where he doesn't want the marine on his on his jury so that he doesn't have any preemptory strikes left when we get to banana headed Owen Wilson and he <laughs> wants to fucking uh, uh, strike him just for being a Christian. Yeah, David A. R. White looks like Muttley went deep sea fishing. <laughs> Cartoon dog. He always looks he came up too fast. Yeah, he always yeah. looks like damp and salty, just like from a moment ago. <laughs> he looks like Guy Fieri got one wish. <laughs> And then they decide they don't want David R. White because he's a pastor, but they've run out of magic jury vetoes. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. So he says, well, he's a pastor and this is a case about Christianity, so you, he shouldn't be allowed on. And they only have this – nobody would ever fucking say that. But they only have this so that Tom can say, well, you can't exclude him from being on the jury just because he's a Christian. He's like, well, he's a he's a pastor. I didn't say just because he's a – Christian, you can, you can exclude someone because of their job. Yeah, right, right. Uh, and apparently because of their taste in television. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Oh, and then, and then of course, again, just shoehorning in characters. We have to cut over to, um, to Cancer Lady VOing about God and her new blog. Right. Now that I feel better, I'm not quite sure I believe in God. So from now on, my blog's going to be about whether or not I like Jesus. And I wrote, unsubscribe. <laughs> right. <laughs> something no one will ever want to read. Sorry, Ryan Bell. Sorry, I know some people. Anyway. <laughs> um, and then, so then we have to cut back over to Martin, who has more questions for for David A.R. White. And by the way, they never even, like, again, I'm sure if you watch the first one, you know, but they never even explain, like, what David A.R. White does, where he works, or whatever. I know he's some kind of pastor or whatever, but, like, when he goes to, like, lunch, there's 43 people there, so he doesn't just work at a church, does he? Who knows? All right. All right. Anyway. But Martin's sad, and he says, I still have more questions, and he's like, don't worry. Einstein said, religion and science, they're both hard, so they're both true. <laughs> Yeah. Well, right, because he's, like, he's like every time you answer a, uh, a question, it just brings up two more. It's it's almost like you're just making this shit up. He's like, no, no, it's, it's Einstein. He said it's like that. Yeah, and, and the Einstein quote they use is apparently Einstein said like, think of knowledge like a flame. The bigger the flame, the bigger the circle of shadow around it. Was that the quote? Yeah, something, something like that. Like that yeah. But that's stupid because the shadow got smaller. Obviously, that circle got bigger. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> There's no – Einstein did not understand that, really? Damn it, Einstein. 
Yeah. You keep fucking us up in these movies with <laughs> right. all your Jesus talk. <laughs> and by the way, Martin's question in my notes anyway was, why are there still monkeys? <laughs> well, and that's and exactly Martin. Exactly. I, well, and that's the thing. Okay. So like we, we, we keep setting up this. Martin has all of these questions, but then when we finally get Martin asking a question, he says, well, it says in the book that I have to do unto others as I would do. I, as I'd have them do unto me, how can I do that at all times? And I'm like, that's your fucking question. You don't, not the <laughs> right. mustard seed thing. Not, not why did Jesus kill that poor tree? But your question is, how do I apply the golden rule? Are you fucking kidding me? It's like the only thing in the Bible that's reasonable. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. The one sentence that you can say where the Christians are going like, oh, I could be answering that question. Not her. Also, we learn at this point that Tom was third in his class at Stanford. Mm -hmm. Let me explain this. If you were third in your <laughs> class at Stanford, there's no chance you're at the bottom of a to totem pole in who the fuck knows who the fuck knows where, defending yeah. a lady that for a case no one wants. If you're third in your class at Stanford, you're already at a high-powered law firm. That's a huge deal. Yeah, pretty... And Christian movies do this constantly. They're like, you graduated first from Harvard, and now you're a farmer in Bayou, New Jersey. <laughs> no, you're fucking not. <laughs> There's like three guys in the history of time who have graduated first in their class from Blobity Blue that went on to be a fucking surf instructor. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh shit. And then we get the then we jump right into the trial here. Right. Uh Judge Winston Zedamore presiding. <laughs> right. right. And, but by the way, it, did you guys catch what the charge is in no. this case <laughs> no. that the movie's about no is it a criminal trial is it a civil who versus whom anything no <laughs> no i have no idea oh okay i, w I thought they said it because i wondered that the entire they did like, not what law <laughs> right. right even at the end when they're like do you find guilty or not guilty of the thing i mean they never even oh, they show tv people talking about it no one ever says what she's being charged with yeah um and i loved i saw a great meme after this came out that showed uh, Winston Zeddemore as the judge that just says, if there's a steady paycheck in it, I'll believe anything you say. <laughs> that was pretty goddamn good. So uh, so then we oh, so we get the ACLU guys opening statement, which, you know, again, like you have to keep setting aside that the thing that they're suing them in, about in the movie is just complete nonsense and have to think about it like it was as though it was a real lawsuit where she had really done something wrong and in that case this is actually a fairly good opening statement where he reminds him like hey guys remember christianity is not on trail trial faith isn't on trial whether or not you can you know proselytize to children is on trial uh um, but he does say christianity is not on trial even though my opponent will tell you that it is and i'm like i'm pretty sure they don't call each other opponents <laughs> <laughs> Even though that asshole over there is going to tell you. <laughs> he also says any fourth grader knows about the separation of church and state. And as someone who's helped raise a fourth grader, they do not know about the church and state. <laughs> they know about Doc McStuffins. Is there an episode of Doc McStuffins about the separation of church and state? <laughs> Most adults do not know what the First Amendment is in this country. What are they talking about? Right, right. And I also love the way he spits out the words separation of church and state like he's describing his mother's labia. <laughs> and again, we get the allegedly thing he's going like she talked about the alleged words that were allegedly attributed to the alleged jesus that allegedly he actually says jesus that allegedly lived back 2000 years right. ago make sure he doesn't want to get sued for saying jesus lived 2000 oh years yeah ago. i gotcha i gotcha yeah. he also declares these parents are offended and i love that like that's what it is it's yes just, it's right. just offended parents being like oh my lord they tried to brand my child how uncouth <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> baptizing my child on a football field i say <laughs> he then yeah. says quote if someone asked me a question about the quran and i had the answer wouldn't that mean i thought islam was superior to all other religions and i gotta tell you as someone who could be asked a question about the quran <laughs> right. and have the answer does not mean i would think it's superior to other religions <laughs> Yeah. And it, yeah, it's a great opening statement. Great point he's making here. Christian parents would absolutely go ballistic if a teacher started 
quoting Muhammad and the Quran in class. Yes, absolutely. Well, like, right. You just lost the movie to yourself. Well, that's – I mean that's the thing is like how interesting that the movie chose to suggest the idea of reading a Quran to students in school because if she had done the same – again, what she did was perfectly legal. And so if she had done the same thing with the Quran, that too would have been perfectly legal. But everybody watching this movie would have freaked the fuck out Panicked. and gone and killed a brown person if they'd yeah. seen that. Right. You can't trace the word for peace. This is the, the group that they named right. at the end of the movie as the good guys are the ones who sued for tracing the word peace in Muslim. <laughs> <laughs> they right. used Muslim. They made my baby go tellers. <laughs> Um, and meanwhile, by the way, the red haired lady is still in the movie too with the, with the blog or something. And she took a Pilates class between the two movies. That's oh. really what she wants you to know. <laughs> <laughs> Gave up breads. Yeah. So like, and, and basically like the only reason she, again, no reason that she's in this fucking movie, but she shows up in this scene because her niece, who is the duck dynasty girl or whatever, is sending her the cell phone video of the protest at the school where the girl's not being allowed to protest because of blah, blah, blah. And she's like, Oh, yeah, I'd love to meet with your underage friend against her parents' will uh, uh, about this ongoing legal case. <laughs> Alone. I'm right. a member of the press. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's got a blog. Well, oh, <laughs> so, yeah, there's that. And then, of course, we get Tom the Lawyer's opening statement. Yes. And it starts with that same fucking trope about how the words separation of church and state are nowhere to be found in the Constitution <laughs> right. or the Declaration of Independence. You know, like, I'm sorry, but, but like, the fact that I'm not allowed to juice my noodle into your socks while you sleep is also not in the Constitution <laughs> or the Declaration of Independence. And I really want to, Jesse Metcalf. I really want to. <laughs> right, but Ray Wise and his legal team are tearing through their paperwork at this point yes. looking for that phrase. <laughs> Yellow pads flying I'm everywhere. Are you sure it's not in there? Check it again. Check it again. You know, the S's looks like S. <laughs> oh, but here's the crazy thing. He brings that up, and that's where the argument's supposed to stop. But then he says the second sentence, which is, it's not in the Constitution. It's something Thomas Jefferson said. Wait, sorry. Did I say that? No, that's their job. When he was trying to explain what the Constitution meant. Yes. Shit. Well, I should have just stopped it. It's not in the Constitution. I shouldn't have explained that the guy who wrote the Constitution was clarifying it. Fuck. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. So apparently, the problem is all the judicial precedent since 1878. Right. Um, right. That's that's his issue. He's like, yeah, they got it wrong. That's not what Jefferson meant at all, according to David Barton. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> David Barton channeled him the other day. I got a video of him in a Ouija board. <laughs> <laughs> Also, we get, again, the most basic right of all, the right to believe. Yes, yeah, the right to love Jesus. And everyone in this courtroom is like, it's true. That is the yeah, most that basic is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Big momentum shift. Uh, I wrote, music note, there's no way the Mighty Ducks beat this team from Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> or is there? Or Quack. is there? Quack. Quack. Maybe if they Quack. team up to get the V, do the V? Okay. <laughs> Knuckle puck. Uh, and then Amy, the reporter, meets with the girl, and they have a totally useless scene except for where she says, you know, my parents are just in this for the money and my future. <laughs> and then the reporter says to her, well, what's your heart telling you to do? And I wanted her so badly to say, fuck black guys? <laughs> <laughs> right. And then we get more more court shit. Right. I guess we get the ACLU presenting their case. And first we get dad on the stand. And like you said, dad's just like, I felt violated. Yes. How did it feel to hear that your daughter had heard about religion? And I wrote in my notes, like a Tuesday? <laughs> <laughs> we're, you see, we're atheists. And being atheist parents, we've never had to talk to our child about religion. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, I hear from a lot of atheist parents. And it's so easy being an atheist parent. <laughs> You just walk through life and no one ever brings up religion in any context, <laughs> especially in the United States. And then and then we get her co-worker, um, the lady who was bitching about how all the students are a pain in the ass earlier. I suppose I suppose we're supposed to hate her or whatever. Yeah, she's the Uncle Tom of this movie. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. And she basically says, oh, yeah, she annoyed everybody with her religious shit. She couldn't eat a stick of gum without saying grace over it. Um, right. So I guess what we're supposed to believe here is that she was Christian, so everyone at the school hated her because of her Christianness, which is why they're ganging up against her. Right. Also, 
He counters this by saying, well, has she ever started a class with a prayer? Has she ever asked you to pray or anyone else? And I just want to point out again that this is the shit that teachers do that the people who made this movie would defend. Like, right. the, has she ever led her class in prayer is an actual example of something that happened that these people defended. Yeah. So it's like is they're trying to use people. Things that they do <laughs> against the other side that didn't. I, I, well, right, and that's what's so fucked Batman. up about this movie is that they couldn't take anything that anyone would actually sue over because it would be so obvious that they were in the fucking wrong. I mean, what kind of an admission <laughs> is that when you make a fucking movie about this shit and you can't use something that ever really happened in real life? Isn't that an admission that the thing that you're afraid of isn't a real fucking thing? They, they couldn't right. even come up with a name for this thing. No, right, right. They, yeah, couldn't, they couldn't even couldn't make even, one up. Couldn't even have something they were suing over. It was just the case. The thing with the uh, yeah, the charge. The movie yeah, plot. exactly. Right. Oh, and of course, and then we have to cut to the news footage where they're talking because apparently this is national news because you know it's so rare that a teacher oh. violates church state separation that they talk about it on all the major media. And of course, we learn here, as if we didn't already know, that all the newscasters hate Christians and Christianity and just yeah. want to see her punished. I wrote in my notes. I'm a news person. Christians are evil. I'm a news person. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. The atheist media machine is all over this case, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Can't turn on Fox News without seeing Richard Dawkins. It's exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get Robin Givens, the principal on the stand. And this is phenomenally stupid. Okay, so first of all, Tom the lawyer starts questioning her by saying, I noticed that your school is called Martin Luther King... High school, not Reverend Martin Luther King High School. Why is that? Like the principal names the school? <laughs> right. right. <laughs> what the I wrote that I universe is this? <laughs> oh, why is it called that? Because I was not in charge of naming the school. Is it because I'm the only black person at the school that you <laughs> said that I named it? <laughs> <laughs> I figured right. they just let you pick every year and they got a new one. <laughs> Question, are you Michelle Obama? <laughs> And her actual answer is the civil rights stuff was the most important part of Dr. King's life, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Said the bad guy from this movie. <laughs> That's what happens. He well, says, but see, I think Tom's argument is MLK love Jesus, black woman. Why don't you? Yeah. Right. <laughs> I wrote objection. White person lecturing a black person on MLK. Yeah, right. That has right. to be against some kind of rule somehow. <laughs> Black judge is like, no, no, I'm going to allow it. I want to see where he's right. going with this uh, MLK <laughs> questioning of the black I lady. wrote in my notes, Dr. King also cheated on his wife a shit ton. Are you going to use that to defend someone in an adultery trial? <laughs> right. <laughs> is it or is not true that he fucked a bunch of people the CIA blackmailed him with the pictures of? <laughs> <laughs> I rest my case. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. Well, and also, again, okay, so he starts saying, well, have you ever read letters from Birmingham jail? Well, of course I have. I'm, 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 I'm black and I'm a person. So, um, and she, and, and he's like, well, uh, he said this Jesus-y stuff right here. And, and what about this Jesus-y stuff? Would you let, uh, uh, Miss Wesley, would you let Grace talk about that in school? And she says, oh, no, that would be too controversial. Again, is that what they think? Do they think that we're not allowed to say that Martin Luther King was Christian? Right. And next, oh. we're going to talk about Martin Luther King, who, you know, was just a guy, just a guy who was black. He accepted evolution. <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and of course, he's got to do the, oh, he starts to walk away and he goes, oh, one last question. <laughs> Yeah, and the the one old guy in the theater loved the Columbo thing. Loved it. <laughs> Do it nuts. Here's this was, a Columbo and Matlock. This was the first time I believe that Heath just gave up and laughed out loud, and I was like, "Oh, good, he did it first. <laughs> yeah. So, and and his last question is, he's like, "Oh, I noticed that uh, at the beginning of the school year, you did a big whole thing about diversity, huh? Uh, I guess it's as long as it's not Christian diversity." To which I wrote, "Oh, it's the All Lives Matter legal defense." <laughs> <laughs> exactly. How clear. I mean, I'm yelling objection at this fucking point. <laughs> at this point, we shot, we got a shot of Melissa Joan Hart, and I just thought to myself, she looks like the girl who turned into a blueberry from Willy Wonka, just like decided to live with it. <laughs> <laughs> And then, of course, Ray Wise cross-examines her, 
And he does the oh one last question yep. thing too. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> he goes. He goes. Uh, basically, did you also do a bunch of blatantly illegal things that haven't been mentioned yet? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's his one she, last question. She kicks the dirt. Yeah. <laughs> no. Did. did she also take donations for her church in her classroom? Yeah. 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 She did. That. So yeah, yeah. Once again, the movie loses it. What? to itself again? <laughs> did she sacrifice yeah. a pig to Lucifer? Right. That's what she did. Yes. yes that's not what we're suing her over. But <laughs> we're now suing that you her mentioned over the it. right to Jesus exist. Who the fuck knows? <laughs> right. <laughs> Is it true that she looks like an alternate universe Louis C.K. where he's a girl? <laughs> it is, Your Honor. It is. <laughs> it's the wig that threw me off. <laughs> it was probably Louis playing the part. Um, and then, of course, we have to, again, shoehorn red-haired lady into this movie. So she sees Melissa Joan uh, Hart after court, and she's like, you know, they want to destroy you, and not just financially. I'm like, what else – are they after her uterus? I mean, what are they, <laughs> what are they gonna do? Grind her. <laughs> oh, and then we gotta cut to lunch with David A.R. White and all his pastor buddies. Yeah. Um, and apparently we have to do this to shoehorn yet another character from the last movie because the guy who is the car rental guy is the waiter now. Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> And he's decided his character's gay. In between the two movies, he's gone like, oh, yeah, that guy was gay. Okay, I got it. I'm into it. <laughs> but this is where we learn uh, via – what's the dead guy who shows up in this movie? The, 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 he was a senator. Uh, Fred – Mike it? Huckabee. Fred Phelps. Yeah, no, yeah, but, yeah. Mike Huckabee's in it too, but the Fred, uh, the Fred guy, he was in. Uh, he was Is Mike in Huckabee dead? Because I'm super happy. No, no, he's not. Unfortunately, can we kill Mike Huckabee? <laughs> Text all your friends. Kill Mike Huckabee. No, no. <laughs> we're getting, we're getting some trouble out of that one. Um, no, uh, uh, Fred Thompson is his name. I think he was a senator oh, yeah. from Tennessee or whatever. Anyway, right. he died right after they filmed this. I, th I think he was supposed to have more of a part in the movie. He just shows up for this one scene. He shows up, and in the words of the immortal Andrew Jackson, gentlemen, I don't want to spoil your brunch. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but apparently, they've subpoenaed everyone's sermons for the last four months. Now, <laughs> again. There is no they. I mean, it's just they. They have subpoenaed. There's no reason. We never established. This isn't connected to this court case in any way or anything else that's explained at any point in this movie. It's just they, they want to fucking hearken back to that thing that happened in Houston where a fucking. Yeah, right. And, they, and, got, they got taken back. Yeah, exactly. They got taken back and quite frankly should not have because the fucking charge in Houston was that the fucking uh, pastors were using their pulpit to to tell people how to vote on a proposition that was coming up in Houston, which they were, which makes it ill, which is illegal because they're tax exempt. That's what the fucking thing in Houston was all about. And they backed down because a bunch of Christian jackasses whined and pissed and moaned and complained about it, even though they had every fucking right to do that. Yeah. Anyway. So for context, the thing that he's referencing was basically a guy was like, vote for Dick Cheney. And we were like, dude, you can't do that. Did you say that in church? And he was like, sure didn't. Do you have a copy of your sermons? I'll sue you to death. Fine, yes. we don't need them. Yeah, right. So that in was this it. version of their universe, that means they're collecting all the sermons for approval from communist America? I guess. Yeah, that's <laughs> Bernie Sanders just reading through all of them. I don't like this one. Not this one. <laughs> Birds landing on his finger. <laughs> well, I think this was mostly there, though, so that David A.R. White could deliver his they'll never take our freedom speech. Right. right. He says, quote, the message of the gospel has a standing against a lot of the things that people want. <laughs> Gay marriage. <laughs> 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 a bunch of packets. <laughs> <laughs> no, David, we have to cut that. I'm just, I was just coughing. <laughs> keep the coughing. <laughs> And uh, we also get to meet this one, like, sniveling liberal pastor who's like, dude, just relax. It's just it's just the ministry of truth. They're doing a standard audit. <laughs> they subpoena right. sermons all the time. It's no biggie. Just take it easy. We're going to give it to them. Yeah. And and so then we cut over to uh, to Chinese food with uh, with Grace and Tom the lawyer. Apparently, Grandpa is acting like this is a date, but let's face it, she could have been casted as this dude's mom in this movie, so it's not. <laughs> right. Yeah. And by the way, during this Chinese food eating scene, Melissa Joan Hart is 
visibly frustrated at how little food she can pick up at a time with chopsticks. <laughs> visibly fr- She is angry. And that that's difficult to do when your face is frozen into one single expression. Yeah, right. Get in there. Scrappled. Get in there. Is it a straw? Is it a straw? <laughs> also, this is where she tells her how she found Jesus' story, which is fucking terrifying. Her story is basically... My parents weren't especially religious, but then I was sad, and there was a church there, and I was like, think I'll join a cult, had a psychotic break, the end. That's it! And it it pans back to Tom, and he looks horrified. (laughs) Well, and uh, but they set it up like it's going to be this big thing, like there was going to be this big moment. She's like, I wasn't a Christian. And he's like, well, when did you say? It was a dark and stormy night, and I was walking down the street, sad and alone, and then I saw a church. And then Tom's like, yeah, uh uh-huh. And she's like, well, that's that's it, was, it, was, it had a sign. You know, that's pretty much it. Have you heard of the word church? It's like a building. There's a few of them around. <laughs> it's amazing. I saw one. <laughs> and at Christian. this point, the writers all looked to each other, and they were like, guys, we need to make this movie about 500 times more racist. <laughs> <laughs> so they decide to bring Martin's dad, the Chinese guy, from China. Yes. For them to have an angry, screaming, in communist China, religion fucks you conversation. <laughs> Right. And by the way, the very first line from old racist stereotype Asian man is, you have disgraced your family. Yes. Stab yourself in the belly right now. Right, right. I expect him to come to a fight or something. Yeah, right. (laughs) (laughs) And then, and then, yeah, so dad finds out he's a Christian and disowns him. Because you know how secular parents are always disowning their kids for disagreeing with them about theological matters. Oh, streets of Utah just covered in LGBT youth (laughs) that are Christian and their parents just won't take care of them. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So, of course, Martin goes to church uh, to get over the dad stuff. And they actually have this Chinese kid singing a hymn on the piano. And I just wrote, they're baiting us. They're baiting. Right. I'm if not he, going there. He goes to the piano and I wrote in my notes, if he says me so ronery, I'm back in. I will, <laughs> I will buy a dozen copies of this movie. It was almost also, there. This movie's pretty well made as far as movies go, but one part of this movie that's fucking insane is there's piano playing over him playing the piano. Yes. At this, point <laughs> of this movie. <laughs> yeah, the soundtrack was the big, like, from a filmmaking perspective, if you take out the acting and the writing, um, the, 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 the soundtrack was probably the weakest point in this film. And of course, the reason that we have this scene is so that we can find out that Brooke was there at the church the whole time and, and, and heard him, and now she has questions for him. Right. She hears him singing, which, by the way, sounds like the elephant man having an orgasm. Yeah. <laughs> More or less. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, we go back to Grace's house where we learn that Tom is lawyering as hard as he can, but he just can't win the case. Right. He's, it, we actually cut to the scene, and it's him throwing down a fucking full, uh, folder full of papers going, he just doesn't make mistakes. <laughs> yeah, right. Ray Wise is Iceman, but Tom's a maverick, so I guess, we'll see what happens. I guess. Which, by the way, most lawyers don't make mistakes, because if they do, it's a mistrial. <laughs> like, that's not an common thing. <laughs> He hasn't slipped up and said, I sure hope no one stabs me in this red glowing spot under my armpit. (laughs) (laughs) But this is also where Grace has her big idea. Yes. She says, what if we can just prove that Jesus is a real guy? Then it'll all be about history and not about religion. Yeah. Which is why no one would sue you over this in the first place any fucking way. She actually says in this scene, she goes, and every credible historian agrees that Jesus existed. There's just too much evidence. That's an actual <laughs> line in the yes, script. It is. And that is when my entire theater burst into laughter and we all realized we were watching this movie. <laughs> That's when my full theater of New Yorkers all went, ha, 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 ha. And we all went, oh, God, we're safe. It's okay. Everyone laughed. Everyone I, laughed. I just wrote in, the, in my notes when I realized that that was going to be their new legal strategy. I just took a whole page to write, hooray. <laughs> I just wrote, dance back, Richard Carrier. Dance back. <laughs> I, I also wrote in the scene because they're doing the late night legal strategy thing. You got to have it. Please tell me we get to watch Melissa Joan Hart run in the rain at some point. Please tell me. <laughs> just sprint there. Right? Sprint right. Or maybe maybe just Tom runs in the rain. I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe he pops the shirt. Yeah, right? you know. Aerodynamics. Whatever. 
some kind of rain running. <laughs> so then, of course, we've got to cut back to uh, Martin and Brooke at the church. He's answering all of her uh, questions because he, you know, he's 147 answers ahead, apparently. Um, it, it, so and this is where she's like, um, you know, like, oh, well, God gave me five more minutes with my dead brother through his notes in the Bible. And I'm like, God also killed your brother with a car. So, you know, I'm I not mean, thinking of it. jingly keys. Jingly <laughs> keys. <laughs> so she gets saved in a very tearful. Yeah, thank you thank for dying you. on the cross for me. And I just wrote in my notes. So want to fuck bad time. Bad time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wrote like, because at the end he says amen for her, but she doesn't say amen. So I don't think oh. it counts. It's like HTML brackets. You got to close that shit or Jesus doesn't know. <laughs> He thinks all the stuff you're saying from yeah. that point on. Yeah, it doesn't. It's like those brackets, she, except they don't work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> so now that your concerns about Brooke's immortal soul have been somewhat allayed, I guess we can pause for a quick break. But before we do, let me give Act Three the hard sell here. <clears throat> Will they spend the rest of this movie trotting out Christian apologists to pitch their books about the historicity of Jesus on the stand? You bet your ass they will. David, thanks for coming in. You bet. Very excited about this new project. Great, great. So your memo said you want to do a courtroom drama this time, right? Exactly. And I want to base it on real cases of Christian persecution in American courts. You know, a bunch of gritty realism. Right, right. Well, um, this is... Ed, he's our chief script consultant for Legal Matters, and we had him look into that. So, Ed, what do you have for us? Uh, yeah, well, um, it turns out that there are no cases of Christian persecution in American courts ever. Ever? Ever. I'm sorry, friend. I find that hard to believe. It, that's because you live in a bubble, right? You live in an imaginary universe that insulates itself with pretend museums, pretend scientific journals, and pretend legal precedents. Mm, that may or may not be true. Well, what about those evil Satan lawyers, the Watch and McCollum, the uh, with the Jew at the, the front, the, the FFRF? Them, yes, them. Yeah. They're they're taking Christians to court all the time, right? Well, e yes, but uh, taking to court and persecuting are radically different things. I'm not sure I believe you, but for the sake of argument, let's pretend I do. What kind of things does the FFRF do? Oh, uh, well, uh, let's see. Uh, here's a case where they, they sent a school a letter because the football coach was doing mass baptisms with his player on the field. See, that's persecution, right? Because everyone needed to get a baptism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, he was, he was clearly violating the law. Wait, wait, how so? What he was doing is against the law. Mm, I see. Um, let's see. Huh. I got another one here. Here's a here's one where they stopped a Christian group in Texas from distributing Bibles in public schools. See, bam, there, persecution. The Bible is our book, and we wanted, and they said no. He's got you there, Ed. You got to admit. Well, no, he doesn't, because again, that's 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 blatantly illegal. Wait, why? What do you? I I uh, I mean, would you want? Say Muslim groups giving your kids Qurans or, or Satanists giving your kids Lucifer coloring books? No, they can't. No, no, no. no I'm not okay. okay. Of course not. Right, right. Now, do you do you see how that's kind of the same thing? I do not. Not, not at, at all. all. What are you talking about? Never mind. All right, all right. All right. What what about this Alabama primary school? The teacher was literally leading her students in prayer, and they stopped that. Is that also persecution? Yes. Yep. And. Yeah. Obviously. What about this coach who would punish his players by making them copy Bible verses? That's also persecution. Yes, positive. Yeah, yes. Straight up lion feed. Mm -hmm. uh, well, okay. All right. What about what about this Louisiana teacher that told her students that the Bible was one hundred percent true? It, it is. Oh, uh, so. Okay. And, and then she told her Buddhist students that their faith was stupid and that they should convert to Christianity. I mean, Buddhism is stupid. They like sit in chairs and stuff. Should convert to Christianity. What do you? And 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 then and and mean? then and then when the parents complain, the school administrator suggested that the family consider moving out of the Bible Belt. I mean, that's a good that's a good suggestion. That's being back neighborly. to where they came from. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. So, so you guys think suing over that is also persecution? Obviously. Wait, those assholes from the FFRF sued over that? Well, well, no, actually, I mean, this one was, I guess that that one in particular was handled by the ACLU. Ooh, but. let's make them the bad guys then. They, yeah, they like the black people, yeah, right? Yeah, perfect. I smell chalk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
And we're back for the, if you can believe this, least plausible third of the film. <laughs> and we're going to inaugurate it with the single moment in the movie that brought me the most ebullience. Maybe not even just in this movie, but in my entire life of going to the movies. And I have an incredible moment. I stood up at the exact same time. I don't know who this guy is, but we're soulmates. Me and a guy in the front row stood up at the exact same time and shouted two words. Lee Strobel! <laughs> Motherfucking Strobel. <laughs> That's right. Lee Strobel, infamous Christian apologist and author of The Case for Christ, is on the stand. <laughs> Lee Strobel is a historian the way I am a personal trainer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that <Right>. is. <laughs> And uh, by the way, he looks like Ed Begley Jr. got punched in the face, <laughs> but he's smiling anyway, like he's permanently smiling. Yeah. So he's like, can you prove that Jesus existed? The, the lawyer is in Strobel's like, well, of course. And for starters, uh, that we said the date at the beginning of the uh, the court proceedings. That proves that Jesus existed. Otherwise, this AD shit wouldn't work. Now... That's literally that's literally what he says is his opening thing. Yes. That just, is actually his argument. It, and no one in this movie goes, fuck you. It, nobody says, right. well, you do know that that didn't really come into usage until the ninth century. Right. And and also biblical scholars all agree that it was wrong when it did come into existence. And if Jesus lived, he was probably born between six and four B.C. You do know that, don't you, Lee Strobel? Mm, I'm important. afraid I'm going to have to present the evidence of jingling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. He's jingling. <laughs> he goes, there are over 39 ancient sources that mention Jesus. They're all ancient. None of them, you know, is like were written when Jesus was around or anything. <laughs> yeah. You know, we don't have anything right. contemporary, but uh, there's a lot of ancient right. sources that talked about him long after he died. Yeah. yeah, his second half of his argument is basically, are you kidding me? People say it's yeah, true. Right. <laughs> he says, Jesus' death on the cross is indisputable, despite all the dispute. That's in dispute in the Bible. Inside the Bible, <laughs> that's under dispute. <laughs> right. Really? Yes, exactly. you Serious? <laughs> it's like a wrestling coach trying to teach a physics class. Brutal. <laughs> well, I love, too, that uh, 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 Tom the lawyer says, now, Mr. Strobel, does being a Christian prejudice your view? To which he goes, no. And he's like, you, do you promise it does? He's like, yeah, for realsies. Okay, yeah. then. And the, and the, and pinky the, swear? <laughs> right. And the whole jury's like, well, he did say for realsies. That, that's a, that, was, that was his pinky. I looked to see if he was going to use the ring finger and try to cheat him, but no, he didn't. And then they basically salon magazine Bart. Yeah, that poor <laughs> bastard. <laughs> that poor guy. He must have gotten a text. That poor motherfucker who's an actual historian. Now I know how Sam Harris feels. He's just sitting there at home, probably reading a book about ancient Mesopotamia, and someone's like, hey, man, did you say that Jesus Christ existed and it's an undeniable fact? And he's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Why would I say that? That's fucking bullshit. I don't know. There's like a movie all over America right now that says you did. Oh, that's. Oh, fuck. Now, for, for the record, Bart Ehrman does say that, that Jesus was a, a, a historical character. Of course, he also. Says a whole bunch of shit Mr. Strobel wouldn't care much for. So right. he says Jesus was a historical character, like fucking, like there was a guy named Yeshua. He's right. Not like yes. Yeah. There was, a, there was an apocalyptic <laughs> preacher named Yeshua who was a dangerous motherfucker that was rightly executed by the people that, like, that, like we would probably execute someone for the same thing now, or at least throw his ass in jail or whatever, um, kind of a thing. But yes, but Bart Ehrman <laughs> gets, uh, gets a name drop there. And yeah. I love, he says, even agnostic historian Bart Ehrman agrees that Jesus existed. <laughs> yeah. They introduce him as the agnostic historian. Historian, yeah. As opposed to all those Gnostic historians <laughs> so, out there. Right. Much more credible now. Good. <laughs> I get it. And, of course, he closes off by pointing out that, uh, according to Lee Strobel, denying Jesus just means that no amount of evidence would convince you. You know, other than, you know, maybe maybe a single contemporary source of shred or shred of archaeological evidence. Could, you know, if you wanted a bunch of bullshit or something. Um, but right. And I love the fact that no one in the... In the movie goes, okay, um, this is not at all what we were talking about at the beginning of this case. <laughs> we really should have defined the charges at some point or something. At, earlier in the movie, the ACLU lawyer is like, objection, leading the witness. But here he's not like, uh, objection, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> exactly. He's like, mm, let's see where they're going with this. <laughs> yes, yes. 
And then uh, we go back to red-haired girl again for some reason, and she's shown up at the church to talk to Pastor Dave, but unfortunately he's away at jury duty, which is fine because African Pastor will fill her right up. Yeah, he says... He's he's sweeping and she's like, where's Pastor Dave? And he's like, he's not here. And then she starts to leave and he goes, sweeping is something I only do part time, which if anyone ever said that to me, I would immediately sprint yeah, away as fast right. as I can. That's how you end up in a basement putting lotion in the basket. <laughs> right. I expected him to go like, I'm actually a producer slash choreographer in my in my real job. But uh, I just sweep here. You know, you want to you want to hop in back. Pastor Dave's not around. I've got this black leather couch. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so she talks to him about how she used to believe in Jesus, but now that he doesn't have cancer, what's the point? And his answer seems to be, I know, crazy, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. He says, Weird. He delights in using us in ways we never knew we wanted. Right. And I wrote the Eli Bosman <laughs> <Yeah>. story. <laughs> <laughs> butt stuff. That's right. just an African euphemism for butt stuff. Yeah, this is exciting. This uh, red-haired lady's character arc is... Continue not having cancer anymore. So she keeps doing like, <laughs> right. got to tie up those loose ends from the first one. Yeah, I it's guess. important. Good job. So now we cut to David R. White going to the county clerk's office where everyone has turned in his sermons except for him. Yes. And, uh, and he goes in and he's like, are you here turning your sermons? He's like, yes. And he puts this envelope on the paper and he says, yeah, it doesn't look like enough for very many sermons. He's like, no. It's a letter telling you why I won't do this. And he actually has this whole little speech where he's like, I mean, I know it's very unusual for a pastor to break the law in any way. <laughs> right, yeah. What? I know Rifra makes it impossible for me to break <laughs> well, the law, right. technically, but I've decided to break the law. Here you go. And uh, he's he's handing the stuff to the ugliest guy they could possibly find. Yeah, yeah. It's just stuffed how, chicken wings in yeah, your right. face the whole time. How are we going to make this guy less attractive than David A.R. White? What about barbecue sauce all over his face? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Can we do like an Antonio Banderas bucket of barbecue sauce <laughs> on him just halfway through the scene? And then David A.R. White walks out and he starts like holding his stomach and he almost passes out or whatever. And I'm like, is his character dying of persecution now? Is oh, that? I really, really hoped that David R. White was going to die during this movie. <laughs> he I doesn't. believe. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And then, of course, we. Today is a good day. <laughs> So then we cut back to the courtroom where uh, he passes out. Apparently, he's had an attack of appendicitis in the middle of the uh, the court proceedings. And the ACLU <laughs> guy yes. loves it. He's like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> you you get the feeling that he is. Po I thought he had poisoned right. David Arwen. Right. His reaction made me be like, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. He actually. The tears of life. Says, I guess that proves there's no God when yeah. he passes out. Okay, well, assuming this alternate juror is an atheist like we thought, I think it's safe to say God is dead. Yeah. Can we just roll? Credits? No. And I love to. Okay, so they bring in the alternate juror, and she's got, like, blue-tinted hair, and she's all goth. There's no way she loves Jesus. Like, I, I didn't I didn't even get that until later in the movie, that that's why they did that, is because we're supposed to look at her and think, oh, she's godless. But she apparently we are. It's a reveal Don't later. Don't worry. Christians can rock pretty hard, too. Am I right, <laughs> newsboys? Huh? <laughs> Who else only gets to see their kids on weekends? <laughs> It's great to be a drummer when you're 60. <laughs> you got to get famous, then be a drummer, guys. You be famous, then drummer. So then, of course, we got to get, uh, now that they got the alternate juror in place, we have to get more testimony from Christian authors, this time from J. Warner Wallace, author of Cold yes! Case Christianity. Yeah. Yes. And I wrote, like, where does this movie take place? And, like, the this is Sports Center of Christian Apologetics. All these guys are just <laughs> in the room. Yeah. Ray Wise is about to call the devil's mascot to the stand. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, it's the guy who wrote Cold Case Christianity, the Homicide detective. Subtitle, by the way, it was the Jews, just like we thought. <laughs> he goes, I examined eyewitness claims. I'm like, are you sure about that? Because there aren't any. Like, like every historian, Christian or not, agrees that there are no eyewitness accounts of anything that happened in the Jesus legend. Nothing was written down until many years after he died. So there are no eyewitness claims. And yet that's his entire fucking thing. Is that, well, right. according to these eyewitness claims, anyway, 
Yeah. Also, and then he's like, well, aren't there a shit ton of contradictions in the Bible? And he goes, yeah, that proves they're true because they're filling in the information that the other one left out. And it's like, yeah, but what about the stuff that's directly contradictory? And he goes, well, that, oh. that's what you'd expect. That's jingly. <laughs> Have I mentioned the keys and how they jingle? I just wrote, oh, the contradictions are good. Well, then what about the parts that line up? Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Do they disprove it? None of it lines up. Check me. <laughs> Airtight. Doesn't line up at all. Oh, and then, of course, we have to get the die for a lie apologetic where he's like, well, think of all of these people that were around at that time. And then they got killed over this stuff. And if they hadn't really seen it, they wouldn't get killed over it. And I'm, I, I'm like, again, there are no contemporary accounts. There's no right. historical evidence that any of Jesus's fucking followers ever got persecuted or uh, martyred or anything like that, unless you take the claims of the Bible literally true. Also... If you're going for martyr for martyr, then I hate to tell you, but Hare Krishna's got you beat by a whole bunch. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, there's the big reveal where he's like, oh, well, no. aren't you biased because you're a Christian? And he's like, no, no, no. When I started this project, I was an atheist. And everyone's like, an atheist who turned Christian? It's not possible. <laughs> now, I, I want to point out the way he words this, too, because he says, no, when I started this research, I was a devout atheist. <laughs> Those are the actual words he used, which is proof that he's full of shit. Every Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I, I know of no one more atheist than me, and I've <laughs> never heard anyone say they were a devout. What would that even mean? <laughs> that doesn't even mean a thing. Anyway, so yeah, yeah. So no, he's like, no, I was a devout atheist. I just became a Christian to sell these books. <laughs> devout biologist. No, there's no. <laughs> right? No doing what? That. By the way, his bio on his own website says that that's not true. Just, oh, just really? Tiny really? Point. <laughs> can throw that on there. The bio on his own website very clearly proves that that's not true. But that's fine. I guess for the moment, it's okay. <laughs> The contradictions are good. The contradictions yeah. are good. Yeah. I, think he, I think he's talking sort of Francis <laughs> Collins atheism. Like, you know, I'm wondering if this Jesus thing is true. Oh, look, a waterfall. Sure is. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Um, and, and as if this courtroom has not gone off the rails enough, all of a sudden, Brooke bursts into the courtroom to yell that Grace is innocent, damn it. Right. And someone didn't just go, mistrial? Oh, right, right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And at the very least, they didn't just have the bailiff remove her. But no, instead, Tom, the lawyer, calls her to the stand. He calls the underage witness that just admitted her bias against her parents' will with no opportunity to for the plaintiff to prepare, no announcement whatsoever. He's like, I call Brooke to the stand. And, and of course, Judge Ernie's like, yeah, why, why the hell not? There are no rules. Sure. <laughs> Would you like a sword while you're yeah, testifying? Right. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I just wrote, how much time is left? Please. They need, like, you know, a Netflix timing bar on the bottom of these oh, movies yeah. or something. <laughs> you got to be kidding so me. Nice. If you're going to go straight to Netflix in two weeks, straight to YouTube, you got to have a timing bar I in the theater. I have never checked my fucking clock so much in a movie. And basically, so once Tom gets Brooke on the stand, his question is like, okay, so do you think the jurors should write guilty or not guilty when they go in there? <laughs> What do you think? <laughs> right. That was basically it. And then she basically, so she says the whole, like, she was great. I asked the question. Then the other lawyer gets up and goes, hey, do you remember the time when your teacher asked you in a moment of weakness whether or not you'd ever thought about life after death and then told you that the reason why she was so happy and fulfilled was because of Christianity? And she's like, right. I yeah. would like to unburst in the door <laughs> I, I can't see you she, she might as well have closed her eyes and been like you can't see <laughs> kool-aid man right back out yeah. so, <laughs> oh no no and i no. love to the, the, the like the bad guy the evil aclu lawyer says so when you were talking with your teacher and she was telling you about Jesus and everything while well, you were clearly upset about the death of your brother, did she suggest you see the school counselor or did she at any time tell you that she was unqualified to talk with you about this? And I'm like, right. what a great yeah. fucking question. Yeah. Did she teach you about secular grief? Yeah. Did she teach the controversy? <laughs> I didn't think so. You're a witness. Again, I just want to point out that I never burst in the door. So, like, <laughs> none of this. I moved to strike. 
<laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, might as well. Um, and then, of course, she mentions on the stand, she talks about her brother's Bible. And it cuts to the fucking uh, parents, and they look like the Salvation Army returned as underage porn collector or something. <gasps> Our son had a Bible. Oh, no. He might be in heaven now. Um, so <laughs> she's like – and she also says she's like, I started reading the Bible, and I just couldn't stop. And I'm just like writing bullshit, but I'm putting a period between each letter, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 shit. Really, what was your favorite part of Genesis? The part where they kept talking about who people fucked. That was the, so good. The part that was good, a lot of it was good. Couldn't put it down. It's like Harry Potter 2, Secret of the Ooze, man. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, but who begat him? So, yeah, yeah. And then the evil lawyer goes... So are you a believer now? And she nods. He goes, maybe even a dramatic pause. He actually says that. Christian? And, and everyone in the audience is like, rabble, 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 rabble. <laughs> Like, I'm sorry, is there a, is there a level between believer and Christian for these people? I don't, <laughs> I don't know what that, anyway. So yeah. So Grace looks over at the jury and she says to her lawyer, she's like, why do they all look so angry? And I, I thought he was going to say, cause they're, they're, it's jury duty. Who the fuck wants to be here? Um, yeah. but instead he says, because they think we lied to them. Like, no, you did. You did lie. They you don't did. think they're correct. Yeah. Exactly. And then everybody gets up. This is so fucking crazy. Everybody in the courtroom gets up and leaves and just leaves Brooke alone on the stand. Yes. You don't just yeah. get to hang out alone in the courtroom. <laughs> But everyone gets up and leaves like the filibuster from fucking Trump's <laughs> And Brooke is just alone crying in an empty corner. Yeah, they just – well, it's secular, so they're just going to leave her there to work it out on her own, I also, guess. Also, fun fact, I did find something less attractive than Melissa Joan Hart. It's Melissa Joan Hart when she's crying. Oh, my God. And here's the thing, though. That I, I loved the fact that she dis – I disagree. I, I enjoyed this whole – anyway, sorry. Go ahead. I, I, but see, I just appreciated the fact that she, like, distracted me from how unattractive she was by reminding me what a shitty actress she was. Mm. Oh, my God. This was so painful. From this point on, like every note I have is just what a terrible fucking job she's doing with the acting in this movie. Um, and, of course, this at this point, we have to have a quick series of scenes trying to remind you who all is in the movie. So we just check in with Martin, check in with David A.R. White, whatever. Remember, he was in the hospital. Then she has a scene where she's uh, chatting with Gramps. Yeah. And mm -hmm. she basically says, recently, when I've been praying, I've been feeling... Not so fresh <laughs> down there. <laughs> By the way, at this point, they're also eating a giant cupcake. Again, if you watch this movie, watch it. They're eating a giant cupcake. It was in the old guy's rider. Yeah, she says, like, when she prays now, it seems like Jesus is a million miles away. And then, of course, Grandpa says, well, you know better than anyone that the teacher stays silent during the test. I'm like, oh, yeah, you've just proved Jesus by his non-existence. Yeah, well yeah. Done. The teacher also stays silent all other times. You have, <laughs> yeah, you right? have an invisible mute teacher. Great. <laughs> As you know, the teacher stays silent during the rape. Yeah, right. <laughs> And then, of course, Brooke brings the whole church choir to her front yard to sing her back into happiness. Uh, yes. And Dad sings, too. And yeah. his singing is almost as bad as her acting. Which, by the way, did they have rehearsals? Like, in the universe of this movie, did they have a bunch of rehearsals just in case the trial went badly? I'm, I'm trying to figure out what that universe looks like. All right, guys. So Tuesdays and Thursday nights from 7 to 10. Again, this is in case Brooke bursts into the courtroom and then her testimony ends up ruining our side of the trial. But then on Wednesdays, we're rehearsing for if we win, but Tom gets hit by a car on his way out of the courtroom. Are you going into that? I so expected that. Uh, and I have to say, like, at this point, when, the, when she's standing on the porch and they're all singing to her, I felt like her not acting had crossed all the way back into talent. <laughs> like, I don't think I could not act as well as she did in that scene. Also, by the way, this movie's technically illegal if they don't sing a dreidel song and an atheist song, too. <laughs> we will subpoena the script if that's what it takes. And as if this movie wasn't spectacular enough, this is where we get Mike Huckabee. Mike Huckabee. <laughs> big exclamation marks all over my yeah. page. And um, I get the impression that this movie was supposed to come out right as Mike Huckabee was pulling ahead in the primary. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it worked out. 
<laughs> uh, also, I think this was supposed to come out while Antonin Scalia was still alive. So, you know, yeah. what are you going <laughs> right. to do? What are you going to do? So Huckabee's talking about this trial, of course, on his TV show to his guest. And I love this little exchange because he, he turns to his guest and he goes, well, how do you convince the skeptics? And, and I, I wanted the guy to just go, you don't, Mike. Is it that <laughs> you give up on them and target children. You know that. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I forgot. I forgot. So, of course, and then we see uh, – and this Do is... I still look like Droopy Dog's abusive dad? You sure do, Mike. <laughs> you sure do. <laughs> Uh, that weight loss thing you had going, not 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 going as well anymore. But uh, it was nice for a while. It was nice while it lasted. Um, and then, of course, this is we're watching. It's Pastor Dave watching this on TV. So now, all of a sudden, Martin shows up to say goodbye because Martin is going back to China to be a pastor. Yeah, Martin's going to get a bamboo stick through the ear. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> I love too that the the black guy goes. Well, there may be challenges in your country, and I'm like. What a way to sugarcoat, you know, you may have your testicle removed by a genetically modified badger. There could be <laughs> challenges in your country. Uh-huh. Uh, and then we cut to outside of the uh, courthouse <laughs> where – now this is, I think, the most racist thing. All of the white people are sitting there – all the Christians are white and sitting there very quietly. Uh -huh. And then the only African-American extras we've seen in this entire movie are standing there just – screaming at them yeah okay right. so yeah. in this world all the science protesters showed up at the courthouse to be rowdy and angry the rabid <laughs> crowds of atheists you so, so often see outside devout atheists devout yeah, right. fundamentalist <laughs> atheists yeah but of course all the christian protesters are calm and collected as always am i right nick and zandy am i yeah. right yeah these christian protesters are super super reasonable they got nice signs like god respectfully disagrees with fags like, yeah. <laughs> let's let's weigh the issues fairly let's open a dialogue about the fags oh, shit so now we're we're getting the last day of court and, of course, Tom is late for court because apparently that's a thing you have to do in uh, court movies so that he can show up dramatically. And this time he's wearing a three-piece suit. And, my God, it looks fantastic on him. He really does. He suited the fuck up. Holy yeah. shit. And he has an American flag pocket square, by the oh, way. Oh, I think. Does he really? <laughs> he has an American flag pocket square. So then he comes to the, uh, comes up to the bench and he goes, I'd like to call a surprise witness because in this world you get surprise witnesses, I guess. After mm -hmm. you've closed. Yeah, yeah right after over. you've already closed <laughs> yeah. your case. No, no big deal. <laughs> he says, I want to call Grace to the stand. And she's like, I don't want to take the stand. And it's like, it doesn't matter. It's like, yeah, it does, though. You can't make it. Does. It. You're just an appointed representative. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Get on up there. Can I treat her as hostile? Sure. You don't know what that fucking means. <laughs> that Go means you can smack her, doesn't it? It's like, yeah. Waterboard her. Waterboard her. <laughs> So, yeah, apparently in this world, you can force your own client to the stand against their will. Then you can ask the judge to treat them hostile, which means that you can yell at them until they cry. That's what it means when you treat somebody as a hostile witness is that you yell at them until they cry. <laughs> right. And then basically he gives a monologue, which is like, isn't it true you're guilty? You're guilty, aren't you? Guilty. Guilty, guilty. And she's like, yeah, man, I'm super fucking guilty. I'm super guilty and I look like David Spade ate too many potatoes and then put on a blonde wig. <laughs> and I, she's like, he's like, I want you to apologize. She's like, but I can't. I'm too Christian to lie. And he's like, well, didn't Jesus speak to you personally? Didn't you tell me that? And I'm like, eh. Voices in her head? Are we going with the insanity plea now? But uh, but no, we're just getting the courtroom. You've got to yell at somebody and, and stuff scene. So basically, this is the you can't handle the myth scene of the movie. Yeah. You're goddamn right I ordered the conversion therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of order. This whole courtroom's out of order. Sorry, I just wanted to. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I object to the way she makes me feel when I walk in the room. So, and then, and so then she reveals this. Apparently, the reason he's brought her on the stand is so that, she, so that she could tell the jury the story that she told him about seeing the church. And that's what happened. Right. And, of course, then Tom, the lawyer, suggests that if the jury finds her guilty, this will inevitably lead to Christians being murdered with guns. Right. He Someone says is, that! 
oh, well, he does the libertarian argument, right? Because it's like, well, first they're going to do this, and then they're going to ask you for your money, and then if you don't give them your money, they're going to throw you in jail. And we all know that law is enforced at the point of a gun. It's the Bernie Sanders trap question. It's the, oh, do you believe in nonviolent people? Shagurk, gurk, blurk, and blurk. I've never read a book. <laughs> <laughs> But that's actually what he says. The argument that he makes to the jury is, you know, like, if you find her guilty, they will murder Christians with guns. This yep. is very similar to the Holocaust. This case <laughs> pretty is very, much. It's pretty much the same thing. And then I guess court adjourns, but for real this time. Uh, and and <laughs> Ernie decides there will be no closing statements. Yes. Court adjourns. And again, they leave someone alone in the courtroom. <laughs> yes! He's just sitting there crying on the witness stand. I also love, as everybody's filing out, you hear from the peanut gallery, somebody goes, she hasn't got a prayer. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But it turns out she does have a prayer, guys. The newsboys are coming back into the movie so that they can pray for her, I guess. <sighs> yeah. Because they took a call on stage. Yes. Amy called them and yes. he's on the phone on, which means that he just answers it. They were in the middle of a song. He was like, one second. Hold on, guys. Oh, it's my friend Amy. <laughs> just in the middle of a fucking rock concert. That's <laughs> much important. Just took a call on stage. <laughs> so we get, uh, everyone praying for Grace Montage. And it's not just the thousands upon thousands that have filled this stadium for a Newsboys concert. It's also all the students and all the people that she knows. I also love during this, um, montage, we get Tom the lawyer reading Man, Myth, Messiah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm a repentant atheist lawyer and I enjoy Man, Myth, Messiah <laughs> and the crisp, clean taste of Sprite. I'm guessing and that the, the uh, uh, and the Salvation Army from, from earlier, <laughs> right? I'm guessing that the author of Man Myth Messiah had his part cut, and they're like, "Oh, we'll have somebody read your book on." I, we promise, we promise. So then we head back to court for one last time, and the the judge turns to them and he's like, "Just to be clear, she said she's guilty." They are guilty. Yeah. The answer is guilty. <laughs> and the jury's like, we find the defendant, Jesus Christ exists. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they have nothing reasonable to say there because they haven't made a charge or discussed what this case would be about. So it's just like, we find in favor of uh, Lee Strobel and the Christian lady. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Whatever is she was charged with. She didn't do it. You and never told us, but we're, we're assuming she <laughs> They cut over to Ray Wise, and I just wrote, there isn't enough fresh puppy blood in the world to satiate an ACLU lawyer at times like this. <laughs> right. And we learn that the goth, this is when the goth girl turns around and she's got a crucifix tattooed on the back, back of her, her neck. neck. And I wrote, man, you could not kill my boner heart. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> that thing is inside my stomach at this point. <laughs> oh. So, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. That, and, and I, I honestly did not realize until I read somebody else's review that this was supposed to be a reveal. That we were supposed to have just assumed this whole time. Well, she can't be a Christian. And oh, there's a cross right there. Like I had, I'm, I'm just like, what, why is, is there going to be a lesbian scene back by, is she like inviting her to the bathroom? Or I, I, I didn't, I had no fucking idea. And then. <laughs> And then Tom gives her the you stood up for what you believe in speech. And then Brooke runs outside to tell the trillions of people who have gathered outside (laughs) the good news about the verdict. And she tells them, (laughs) God's not dead. But she can't do that because that won't fit into the song correctly. So she (laughs) so they all start chanting, God's not dead. He's surely alive, which is not you can't chant that many syllables in that big a crowd. And it was very clear. God's not dead. He's in the, God's not dead. So it sounded like they were trying to sing row, row, row your boat together or something. As a round in, in a crowd of millions. Yeah. And uh, by the way, apparently God can't create a court case that he can't survive. So, <laughs> so what case- now, J. Walter Weatherman or whatever the fuck that guy's yeah, name is? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and then, of course, we get the uh, – we get Gramps. He's with his walker and he's walker dancing. And he says, God is good. And then we right. cut to African guy and Pastor Dave who are like, uh, we, are you going to say the uh, the tagline thing from the first you movie? You do our you? catchphrase. And he's like, how much am I getting paid? A lot. Okay. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Yes. I, I hate you. <laughs> and then we get uh, Ray Wise walking out of the um, – 
out of the courtroom with his lawyer team. This is the only time that hot chick that was distracting you from earlier talks. Oh, no, that's a different hot chick. Never mind. Different hot chick. Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, the other hot chick in this movie. So she go- he goes, I just don't understand how they won. And the other guy goes, lawyer talk, lawyer talk, lawyer talk. And then the girl goes, well, not to mention they proved the existence of Jesus Christ again. <laughs> That was a line in right. the script, not to mention that they proved the existence of Jesus Christ. I wanted so badly for him to be like, shut up, Vanessa. <laughs> yeah. Do you even work here? <laughs> I also think as an atheist lawyer that it's worth noting that we were defeated by the very same logic and reason we cherish so dearly. <laughs> it's a bitter taste, our own medicine sure is. <laughs> We Guess lost. it turns out that God's Fair not square. dead after all. What the fuck are you talking about, <laughs> Vanessa? Sorry, I'm real high right now. This trial's been a mess. <laughs> the judge had, had, had let me have a little bit of his bong earlier. So, And then uh, we all texted each other. And by that, I mean the three of us all <laughs> each other. And I just want to point out that in the theater, I texted my fiance. I tweeted this, but I texted my fiance. God's not dead. He's surely alive. She texted me. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the screenshot that Eli sent me and Heath when we texted him, God's not dead, he's surely alive. And I was in such a hurry to get it done that I actually sent said, uh, God's not dead, he's sorely a love, but, you know, <laughs> what the hell. I, usually I would have gone back and corrected that, but I'm like, ah, fuck it. You have atheist autocorrect and won't let you say yeah. something like that on the text. <laughs> Secular autocorrect. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Now from the communist conspiracy. And then this movie ends on the most possibly bizarre thing you could imagine, which is inspired by these real cases, and I cannot recommend enough looking up the cases of Christian persecution. They have the, like... Christian Baker was like, I don't serve faggots. In my <laughs> story. They could not pick worse examples. It's just a series of monsters who people had to be like, no, everyone's a human. You sure? Yes, <laughs> we're sure. And as if that wasn't offensive enough, after that list of cases, it comes up with an exhortation to call the Alliance Defending Freedom if you're a Christian whose rights are being trampled on, like in this movie. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, the ADF is a goddamn anti-LGBT misogynistic hate group. It's a fucking hate group that they're telling you, call the hate group. Yeah, this is like two steps away from saying... Call the KKK if this ever Yeah, right. If you ever have Jews in your neighborhood. (laughs) Find a guy with a hood. Also, did you guys stick around for the after credits? I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I know it was there and I still couldn't do it. After the credits, David R. White gets arrested for not submitting his sermons in the first degree. (laughs) Really? It's amazing. Yeah, they're setting up movie three. He gets arrested (laughs) for not submitting his sermons. And then she, they like the, the black guy and the reporter are there and she's like, what's going to happen next? And he's like, well, whatever it is, we will have to fight. And then it's like, Bwah! I wanted so badly for the Civil War logo just to flash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how great would it be if after Spider-Man shows up, it's the black guy. He jumps on top of a car. Yeah. To me. <laughs> Today is a good day. day. <laughs> Shit. I wish I did stick around now. Oh, Ooh. God. There's, so there's more to come, folks. There's still more to look forward to. Okay. So I have a question. What the fuck was the moral of this story? Like, what are we supposed to learn? If we're Christians who actually believe this shit, what are we supposed to walk away from this movie having learned? Um, If you are a teen television star, be careful <laughs> about starches in your late 30s. <laughs> actually uh, a lot better than I could have done for that time. So, okay. Now, obviously, between the three of us, we couldn't possibly have enough stars to spare as this tour de force would deserve. So rather than attempting to quantify a masterpiece, I'm simply going to ask you this. If you were a jurist and this movie was the defendant, what is the most egregious crime you could find it guilty of? Uh, all right. Um, I'm going to say straw man slaughter. <laughs> Definitely straw man slaughter. Nice, nice. Well done. Wordplay. Uh, can I say rape? <laughs> <laughs> but we kind of asked for it. We kind of asked for it. 
<laughs> like we went. I dressed pretty slutty at the theater. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I've seen, I see here that you guys watch a lot of these Christian movies. So uh, fraud. You're kind of like a Christian fraud? movie slut, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, I, I just want to say, like, I have like, because the last movie I walked out of before this one was Batman versus Superman, and I just, it was so nice to walk out of a theater not being disappointed. I mean, say what you will about this <laughs> film, but it gave me everything I hoped for, and then some. It sure did. I could not possibly have imagined just how offensive and disgustingly ridiculous this film would be. So, well done, David A. R. White. You have set the bar high for yourself for God's the not ultimate dead. ultimate April Fool's Three. joke. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Christianity. <laughs> Jesus comes out. Like, guys, we had that back then, too. I'm sorry. And you didn't pick up on it because you move Easter around. But it was April Fool's when we... We did this. Um, oh, so I guess, well, that's going to do it for our review of God's Not Dead 2. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to get you all moist for next week. So, Eli, tell us, what's on deck? Revelation Road, the beginning of the end. Oh, my God. Okay, so obviously we felt like we had to come down off this David A.R. White high slowly. You don't want to go cold <laughs> turkey. Yeah. So we're going to ease our way out. This is a trilogy, correct? Yes, this is a trilogy that's an action series it, it about David R. White is a traveling salesman who knows karate. Like, I think he's got, like, magic ninja Christian karate. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. And he's going to use it to fight post-apocalyptic bikers, <laughs> but it's not the apocalypse. Feral bikers who live among wolves. It, it's not I clear. Guess, I guess. So, yes, David A.R. White is an action hero. Can't believe it took this long. And apparently, this is a trilogy where all three films were released in 2013. <laughs> so, <laughs> Just bunch them up. Bunch them up. <laughs> so I'm guessing he ended the night, he like, he had like a four and a half hour movie. And they're like, guys, we're going to have to split this up or something. This, this has DVD box set written all over it. <laughs> <laughs> No discount bin will be complete without it. So with that to look forward to, we'll bring episode 33 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thank to all the Patreon donors that helped make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to every episode. You can also help us out a ton by leaving a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist and The Skeptocrat, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail. Com. Another big thanks to Morgan Clark for kicking ass with a song this week. Again, his SoundCloud will be linked on the show notes. And, of course, our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars, who will also be linked on the show notes for this episode. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm no illusions promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, 